Hey you guys, welcome back and thank you so much for joining me today. So it is no secret that I am just a little bit obsessed with the We Are Memory Keepers foil quill. I love this tool. This is definitely becoming one of my favorite tools because as you know, I love to be able to add some foil accent and the foil quill does that so beautifully. So in today's video, I wanna share three examples of how you can use your digital files, spruce them up and add some foil to it, but not just your digital files, how you can add foil right on top of a pre-printed page. So I'm gonna be using skills that we talked about in my last foil quill video. So if you've not seen that, definitely check that out. I will have it linked below or up here in the cards. In the first project, we are gonna take one of our digital papers and instead of just printing it out, we are going to add a touch of foil so that it is something extra special. So let's jump in and get started. We're gonna begin this tutorial on my computer and I'm in Photoshop and the file that I have open is from Allie Edwards' December Daily main kit from 2020 and this is one of the six by eight digital papers. And the reason why I chose this one in particular is because I want to be able to isolate these stars so that I can trace them later in my silhouette. So these stars need to be black. So that is going to be our first step. So in order to make any changes to this file, we need to come over here and we need to check the lock so that we are unlocking this layer or this file so that we can then manipulate it. And then we want to come over here to where I've got the where the magic wand is and click on that. And then we're just going to click on the background. So this beige area, we're just going to click on and we're going to go ahead and we're going to hit delete. And you can see now we've got a transparent background with the stars. And because it's hard to see with the marching ants or the selection, I'm going to do, I'm going to hit controller command D and that is just going to take away those marching ants. So now we're ready to turn our stars black. So I'm going to come down here in my layers panel to this FX and click on it and then come up to color overlay. And we are going to change the color to black. Now, if yours isn't already black, just go ahead and click on this swatch and then drag it until you get to black and then click OK and then click OK again. And now you can see we've got our stars ready to trace. But this is a six by eight piece of paper and I really want it to be more of an eight and a half by 11 because I'm going to be printing on eight and a half by 11. So I figure I might as well, you know, put stars on the whole piece of paper. So the next thing I want to do is put this on a six and a half by 11 and um, make it a little bit bigger. I guess I should say stitch the designs together. So I'm going to come over here to file and click on new. And then I want it to make sure that I've got the eight and a half by 11 or the letter size checked because that's what I'm going to be printing. If you're going to be printing on a different size, you can choose whatever you're going to be printing on. Or if you wanna leave it as a six by eight, you don't even have to do this step. So just go ahead and click create. So now I've got my white paper, which is fine because because my stars are black, so this will work perfect. Now come back to the stars that we had and I'm just going to actually, I think I will flatten this image actually, and then come over and get the move tool and then click on this layer and then pull it into the um, untitled layer, this eight and a half by 11, this new, this new uh, file that we set up. All right, so what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna copy this. So I'm gonna first just put it in the corner here and I wanna copy this and make some copies of it so that it fills up the entire eight and a half by 11. So I'm gonna click on Alt, then I'm gonna, you can see that my cursor has changed to a black arrow and a white arrow. That means it is going to copy. And then I'm going to just click and drag on my mouse and then I will let go of my mouse and then let go of my hand. And I'm going to then move this around to see if I can get um, it in the right place, kind of stitch it together. And that actually looks pretty good. I'm gonna bring it up a little bit to see 
Um, and sometimes these go together really well and sometimes they don't. And that actually looks pretty good um, considering. And I'm gonna controller command minus to bring it out a little bit. And then I'm going to copy both of these together. So I've got one of the layers highlighted. I'm gonna shift click on the top one. And then I'm going to click or touch down on Alt again or hold Alt, I guess I should say. And then click and drag on my mouse and then let go. And see if I can match these up. And that is looking like it's gonna match right there. And I'm just using my arrows to kind of nudge it into place. And let's click off one of those and see how it looks. It actually looks really good. And I am not gonna worry about this little piece right here. And the reason is because the way my printer is gonna print out the color, it's going to leave a space. But if you're going to just be doing this like on white or maybe a pattern paper that you already own, you can go ahead and stitch this one more time, copy it and fill in this gap. It's not hard to do. So I'm actually going to click on the top layer, then click on this layer one. And you don't want to do the background. So just those top ones. And I'm going to right click and then I'm going to click on merge layers. So now they're all going to be merged and they're going to move together. And then I'm just going to center it. And I could probably, I was going to say, can I use this? I don't know why this is sitting here. I can't get it to go away. So um, I'm going to uncheck this lock. And if I click on the background and then this layer, I think I can center them. Well, that didn't really work with the background, did it? Not that it matters because it's white. But I, I pretty much centered that, which actually it looks really good. Like I said, it's going to put a white border once I print out my color. Okay, so I think that actually looks really good. So I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna come to File, Save As, and I'm gonna save it as the Let's see, I'm gonna come over to the pattern paper. I want it to be on the pattern paper. Oh, it wants me to do a Photoshop. I'm gonna come down here and just do, I think I'm gonna do a PNG or a JPEG. Let's just do a JPEG. And we'll just do black and white stars. That's what I'll name it. Click OK. All right, then click OK again. And since I have this file open and I do need to do another file or another um, letter size file, I'm just gonna go ahead and now click on this layer and delete it. And we are going to fill this up with color and then we're going to print this out. So I'm actually gonna save this as another file just so I don't accidentally um, do anything with the stars. So I'm gonna click on, so I'm gonna name this pink and then click save. And that way, whatever I do on this piece of paper or this file, I'm not gonna interrupt my stars. I'm not gonna accidentally save over it. So that's just a tip there. All right, so now I'm gonna come over to this other paper that I have opened up. So this is a digital six by eight paper also, and it came from Paisley Press's main kit from 2020. And all I really want to do with this file is sample the pink. I really like this pink color. I like how subtle it is. And I want to use it this year in my December daily. So I'm going to come over here to the eyedropper tool, click on that, and then click on the pink. And you can see that it is sampling it here. Kind of hard to see because it can look very similar to white, but it's definitely pink there. And that's all I need that file for. So I can just go ahead and click off of that. Now I, what I need to do is I want this whole thing to be pink. So I'm going to click on the uh, marquee tool and then I'm going to drag and let me do a better. So I just like to go up here at the top, just click and drag over the whole file. And then I am going to actually, there's several ways you could do this. I'm just going to right click, click on fill and then make sure foreground color is selected since we are using the foreground color and then click okay. And now you can see that it has turned pink. 
So this is the file that I'm actually going to be printing. I'm just gonna send this through my printer and this is what I'm gonna be putting onto my silhouette mat. And then we're gonna foil the, those stars onto here. All right, so now I'm gonna go to my silhouette since we have everything ready to go. So just go ahead and print out your background. Now to the silhouette. I'm gonna control or command minus to come out a little bit. All right, so we are going to, in fact, I think this was open. So let's just open this file. And I don't see my black stars. Oh, we are in the Paisley Press Mini and I wanna be in the main. So here is our black stars right here. So I'm just going to click on it or actually I'm going to drag it in. Just going to drag it right in. And you can see that it comes in pretty large. So I'm going to make sure I'm clicked on this file. Make sure the lock is in place. And for the width, I know it is going to be an eight and a half by 11. So I'm going to click on eight and a half, hit enter. And now you can see that it totally changes. All right, so now I have my file here and now we need to make these stars ready for the foil quill. So we need to trace them. So I'm gonna come over here to my trace panel, click on that and then click on select trace area. I'm gonna just click and drag over the whole piece. And then you can see that it's gonna outline in yellow. I'm gonna bring it up a little bit just so we can see. You see how some of them are looking really good and some of them aren't looking as good. I'm going to move the threshold up a little bit, a little bit to kind of clean that up and see if it can do a better job. And then I'm going to click on trace and I'm going to get a little bit closer to see how like if it did a good job getting it smooth and that actually did a really good job. It's not jaggedy. Okay, so I'm gonna pull it out a little bit. Well, actually, here's the piece of paper. I'm just gonna move that out of the way, click on it and delete it because I don't need it. So now we've got our uh, file with the, um, with the outline and you could actually just foil this. I think this would be really cool as well, but I want to fill it in. I think it looks really great that way. So with it selected, I'm gonna come over here to the line effects panel, click on that. And then I'm gonna come over here to where it's the spiral effect and then just click on the spiral effect. And it's gonna take a minute. It does take some time to add these lines in. But you can see that it's added lines inside of the stars, which is exactly what we want, but the spacing is wrong. We want it to really fill it in. So I'm gonna take my spacing all the way down so just click on this arrow and bring it all the way down, or you could type in 0 0.005. That is the smallest it will go. And my computer is just running a little slow for some reason. So maybe what I'll do here is double click inside and do 0 0.005 and then click enter. Now it is going to take a minute to do it. Like I said, adding these lines, it, it, it's taking a lot of your computing power on your machine. So if you have an older machine, this might take a minute. Just keep that in mind. Hopefully it won't crash your machine. But um, I am having, I am, I should, I should say, I am doing something in the background of my machine, which is I think why it's taking a little bit longer. So hopefully you guys won't have a problem. So I'm going to control or command minus just so we can see how good and dense that is and bring that back in so you can see the lines that it added all these little lines inside the stars and the foil quill is going to trace all these lines so keep in mind it actually does take a little bit of time it might end up taking like 15 minutes for your foil quill or for your machine to actually do these stars but it is so so worth it so now that we have our file all ready to go, the next thing we need to do is get it placed on the mat in the right place so that it will foil accurately onto our piece of paper. 
So I think the easiest way to do this, and if you saw my video where I was working on the photos from the art of noticing using the foil quill, I brought in those photos. We don't need to bring in the piece of paper. We just need to have an eight and a half by 11 um, rectangle to help us place it. So I'm gonna come over here to my drawing tools, get the rectangle tool. I'm clicking and dragging, and it doesn't matter, matter what the size is because I'm actually gonna come up here and I am going to click on, um, first of all, make sure this is unchecked because we do want to change the proportions. And the width is gonna be eight, eight and a half by 11, and then my height is gonna be, well, the width is gonna be eight and a half, and the height is gonna be 11. I'm gonna click enter. So do whatever size paper you're gonna be uh, printing on. Then I want to, my, to get my move tool over here, and I'm gonna move this so, wherever I want it to be on this 12 by 12 mat. So I think I'm gonna place it right here. So it's gonna be one inch in and then a uh, half of an inch down. And I'm just going to nudge with my arrows just so I can get it in the exact right place. Now I'm gonna bring this file back over and I'm gonna fit it in to where I think it looks good. If I wanted, I could go ahead and center it, but like I said, this piece of paper is just gonna be blank and pink, and it is gonna have like a eighth of an inch or a fourth of an inch of white all the way around it because my printer is not gonna go all the way to the edge, but it doesn't matter. It's not like my photos where it has to be in the exact right place. I just wanna make sure that it's in a pretty good place because in the end, I will end up cutting this down to probably a six by eight or a little bit bigger so I can use it without a page protector. So I definitely will be cutting this down. So it doesn't have to be totally precise, if you know what I mean. All right, so now I am ready to send it to my silhouette. So I'm gonna come over here to the send panel. And what I'm noticing here is I've got my stars and then I've got this rectangle. Well, what I know for sure is I don't want to foil this rectangle. So I'm gonna actually click on the rectangle. And I don't know if I can do that here. What I'm gonna do is come back to the design. I'm gonna click on the rectangle. Now that I know this is in the exact place and I'm gonna remember that this is the corner I'm gonna put my paper, I'm gonna click on that rectangle and then I'm just going to delete it. Now I'm gonna go over to the send panel and I will tell you, if you wanted to leave the rectangle, you could change the color so that it's not red. And that way you could just make sure that it doesn't do anything. Let's say if you made it blue, then you could come over here to the line panel and you would see blue and then you could just uncheck it and then it actually wouldn't do anything, but you would still have your rectangle so you remembered exactly where you uh, place, where to place the paper. So now that we over in the send panel, what we wanna do is we wanna make sure we are foiling these and to foil, it needs to be sketched. So that's what our action needs to be. So we are gonna come over here to our action and we're gonna click on sketch. Keep in mind, if you try and do this and your sketch action is not available, try using a different material like one of the card stocks and then the sketch will be available for you. All right, you guys, I'm jumping in because as tradition, I have lost some of my footage when I was making this. And it's because I made it like over a month ago and I've switched computers and you know, yada, yada, yada. I have no idea where it ended up happening to it, but it's fine because all the information that I was gonna share with you, you can get from the two other projects. So next up is we are gonna take this digital file from In A Creative Bubble and we are going to play with it to add some foiling details to it. So let's go. So I'm back in my Silhouette Studio and I have the In A Creative Bubble file opened up. This will be linked below, but keep in mind, you could do this with any file you have. I just want you to realize that the sky is the limit for adding little foil details to your print files. So the first thing that we need to do to get started is to trace. We need to trace the outer edges. And so I'm gonna come over here to where the panels are, click on the trace panel, which looks like a butterfly, and then click on Select Trace Area. 
Then I'm just going to drag over, click and drag over the file and it's going to highlight all the black areas. And this is actually a really great trace, but I want it to be just a little bit thicker. So I'm going to up my threshold a little bit, maybe to about 60. That looks great. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on trace. And now you can see that I've got this red outline which is my trace, and then I've got my file in the background. Now I wanna keep these files together because I am gonna be doing a print and foil. So, you know, if I move this out of the way and then I have to bring it back over and try and find it in the exact right position, it just gets a little messy that way. So I'm gonna control or command Z to get back to where we were. So we're just gonna keep these together and we're actually gonna use the layers panel to help us as we're selecting some of these trees to delete. All right, so I'm gonna come over here to my layers panel because the next thing I wanna do is lock this background layer. So the easiest way to do that is to, to select the background layer and you, you can see that it's showing this polygon is selected and that if I click on this layer here that it's going to lock down and then it becomes unselected and that way I'm not able to select it at all so that I can start deleting these trees. So I'm going to get up a little bit closer, Command or Control Plus. And the trees that I chose to foil is this tree and this tree. Now keep in mind, you could choose whatever tree you wanted. You could do multiple trees if you wanted. It's just you could do the stars if that's what you wanted to do. It's totally up to you. Just choose some trees that you want. It could be random trees. Like I said, it just doesn't matter, but choose the ones you want and then we're gonna delete everything else. So the next thing we're gonna do is we need to isolate all these layers so that we're able to delete them individually because right now you can see that they are moving as a group. So I'm gonna control or command Z to bring that back. So I'm gonna right click, come down to release clipping path and you can see that I've got a box around all of these individual things. So the outside of this tree, whoops, Controller Command Z, they were all selected. I have to unselect them, make sure I've got my move tool. If I move this tree and the outer edge, you can see that they move separately. So there are all these little pieces everywhere that now we need to delete. And I'm gonna go ahead and delete that one. So I can totally just click and drag on this whole top layer and delete it because I don't need any of them. This is the one I, I want, right? So I'm gonna click and I'm just gonna drag over everything and then hit delete. Remember, this is one of the other trees that I wanted. And one thing that I will say also, these little baubles on the tree, I want those as well. So I'm just gonna leave this tree alone. And I can delete all of these. And you can also do things individually if it's feeling like it's a little too hard to get in there. And this is the tree I wanna keep. So I'm gonna control or click and drag and this is the one I want to keep, so I'm going to click and drag. And if you make a mistake, just Control or Command Z. And I'm going to leave that one. Actually, I'm going to delete this one because I'm going to use the baubles on this tree. In fact, I'm going to delete this one too. I'm gonna use the baubles on this tree and I'm just gonna copy them because they are the same. All right, so scrolling down, I know this whole bottom I can delete. This one I wanna keep. And I wanna leave these because it's different from this tree. So we'll delete that one and then we'll delete these. And you can see that it left a couple, so I need to get those. Controller Command Z, I feel like maybe I all right, so that looks okay. These ones are still outlined and I want to keep them because I want the foil to be the words also. So I think that looks pretty good. Actually, I've got some dots here. So I'm gonna delete those. And a way I can see if I got everything is I'm gonna come back over here to the layers, scroll all the way down, and I'm gonna click on this eyeball and it's gonna get rid of my print file. And you can see 
if I got all the little pieces from the other trees and I did. So the one thing that I want to do here is I need to get rid of the outline and all the middle pieces. So I'm going to control or command plus and I'm going to get in there and just highlight the top of this tree and delete it. Now it would be a lot easier if I just decided to come over here and make my own little circles, but I kind of like that these circles are random and not perfect. So I'm going to, I want to use, whoop, controller command Z. I actually want to use the trace for this one, but it is totally up to you. It probably would save you just a little bit of time. I keep clicking on that circle. There we go. All right, then the other thing we need to do is come down to this tree. I'm gonna click on that, delete, and I'm gonna click on this circle also because it was kind of a weird shape. And then I'm gonna leave the other circles. All right, now I'm control or command minus just to, which that was a little bit much, just to bring it out so we can see the whole file. And then I can click back on the file. This is what's so awesome about using the layers panel is that you can just keep everything together. All right, so the next thing that we need to do is we need to fill everything in. And I'm actually going to uh, uncheck the circle also so we can see this a little bit better. And I'm intentionally doing something wrong here because I want you to see what happens to the inside of these letters. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to add in the lines for the foil quill. So I'm gonna come over here to the line effect panel and then I'm gonna click and drag over all of my um, all of my pieces and then we're gonna click on this circle here. And you can see that it's added some lines in between everything, but that's not gonna be good enough for the foil quill to fill it in. So we need to make those lines tighter together. So I'm come over here to the spacing and bring it all the way to the left, which is 0 0.005. And now you can see that it fills in really, really nicely but it also fills in the inside of the word or the letters. So what I needed to do is create a compound path. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm just gonna click and drag over all the letters, right click and come down to make compound path. And now you'll see that it just punched out the inside of those letters. So keep that in mind. I'm gonna come back here to the layers panel. If you are using one of the other trees, that look like this, anything that has like the inside, if it is making all the little lines from the line effect inside your trees, it's because you need to make it into a compound path. And that just means that it's basically, it's punching out a shape. I don't really know how else to explain it. So, but if there is something that needs to be punched out, just make sure you create it into a clipping mask. All right, so controller command minus just to bring it out a little bit so we can see this file. So now what we have here is the black background, which is going to, or not the black background, but the black trees that are going to print. And then we have the files, or excuse me, the foil that is going to foil on top. But you know what, I wanna make sure that the black from the print is not going to mess up at all with the foil quill. You know, sometimes I've had it, where my silhouette can just be slightly off and I don't want any black peeking through. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're actually going to erase this area. Um, actually, before I do that, um, I'm gonna do the bobbles. I forgot about the bobbles. So I'm gonna control or command plus and then we will do the erasing. So I'm gonna get really tight on this tree and you can see that I've got the three circles. So I need to add the other ones and then I need to copy and paste them. But I also, and I'm gonna get really close, Controller Command Plus gets really close. I need this to cover the entire color. So I'm gonna select on this image or this circle, come to the corner, come to this like corner and drag it and then come to this corner and drag it. And I really, what I really wanna do is make it just a little bit bigger than this color so you won't see any of the color through it. And then I'm gonna click on Alt and I'm gonna drag it over to this yellow one. And I'm just using my arrows to cover it. And because I'm copying this, you can see that it's a little irregular. I'm gonna um, hover over this 
green dot and I'm just going to shift it a little bit so it'll look a little bit different. All right, so I'm going to do the same for this one. I'm going to drag it in this corner and then drag it in this corner. And that looks pretty good. I'm move it up just a little bit. And then I'm also going to click on Alt or Option and drag it over to the red. And if you're feeling like it's a little too big, then you could bring it down a little bit. All right, so we're gonna do the same here. Keeping in mind, if you are going to create a circle, you could do that just by creating a circle. If you click on Shift, it will make it into a perfect circle there. And then you would just need to do the uh, line panel fill. But I like it to be irregular. So I'm gonna click Alt or Option, and then I'm gonna drag this one, copy it over the yellow, and then I'm also going to you know, adjust it a little bit so it doesn't look exactly like the other one. All right, so now that that's together, I'm actually going to click and drag on all of them, and then I'm gonna Control or Command G, or you could right click and See, did I do it? I did it. I was going to say you could right click on them and then you could group them together if you wanted to. But I just prefer to do it that way. And now I'm going to control or command minus to bring it out because we need to copy these and bring them over here. Now you can see that they're in different places. So what I'm going to do is, let's see if the other one is exact. This one is exact down here, so I am going to click on them, Controller Command Copy, and then Controller Command Paste. So you can see the paste or the copy. We're just going to drag it down and see if everything matches. And did I just move that file? Can't decide. All right, so that looks really good. Now for this one, I think we just need to reverse it. I'm gonna try and reverse it and see if that is in the same place. So I am going to copy and then controller, or I'll right click since I right clicked before, controller command paste and bring it down here. And what I'm gonna do is right click and I'm going to flip horizontal so it's actually going to flip these bottles because it looks like they're flipped but I need to make sure and yep they are in the exact right place they just needed to be flipped so flip it horizontal and then you won't need to do anything else all right so now I'm going to control or command minus to come out and now we've got everything ready to go but we need to delete on the print. And I'm actually gonna come over here to the eraser tool and click on the eraser tool. And then what I wanna do is click on this lock because I want to lock the red. And then I wanna come all the way down here and I need to unlock this back layer. And it's not letting me unlock for some reason. Okay, now we'll unlock. I guess I don't know if I needed this tool, but I just unlocked that one. And now I want to lock. Oh, it's they're tied together. Okay, so this is what I'm gonna do. I didn't realize they were tied together. I'm going to unlock this and I'm going to click on it and I'm just gonna drag it out. See if I will let me drag it out. How about I click on this one? and drag it out. All right, so you can't actually see our trace files because this came, the, this layer came up on top of it. So what I wanna do, I'm gonna make that a little bit smaller just by clicking on that minus sign. I'm going to take this layer and I'm gonna drag it to the bottom. Or maybe what I need to do is take this layer and drag it out to the top. Is that gonna work? There we go. Okay, so now we've got our tracing on top and now I can hold down actually this top layer. Now, I need to figure out what is going on. So I'm gonna rename this the print. 
and then the trace is on top. So I'm just going to rename them and I just double clicked to rename. All right, so we want the trace to be locked and then this bottom one we want it to be unlocked because that is what we're going to delete or erase. So I'm going to come over here and get the erase tool and then I'm going to come up to this tree and I'm just going to erase it and it looks like it's erasing both of them but you can see as I you know hover off of it I actually have my trace and I'm just erasing the black. I'm not entirely sure why it does that and that was a mistake so I'm going to controller command Z and get that back. All right now we're going to do the same here. And once I go off of it, you can see that I've got my trace file back. Okay, so you're seeing these uh, gray lines. Let me get a little bit closer here so you can see what I'm talking about. Controller Command Plus to get closer. See these gray lines? Actually, what is happening here is I am cutting out a hole in this file and so what you're seeing is the gray lines from the mat in the back so that's not something that's going to print it's just the gray lines from um, the mat so just keep that in mind now the other thing we're not going to do is i'm not going to erase the bobble colors i'm just going to assume that it's going to foil quill on top of it because I made them the circles a little bit bigger than the ones behind it so i'm just going to leave it that way but I am going to do these and I think I will make this a little bit bigger. So I'm going to come up here to the size and I think this is going to make it a little bit bigger. Yeah, there we go. All right, holding down the space bar to get that hand so I can move around the file. And don't forget that we want to erase this as well. So let's finish this up. That looks good. And if I made this a little bit bigger, it probably would have gone a little bit faster. But that actually looks really, really good. So this file is um, ready to go, except for the fact that now we need to make it into a print and cut. So I am going to Controller Command minus to look at this whole file here. Oops, Controller Command Z, bring those back together. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unlock, well, let me, lock the background and unlock the trace and what i want to do is i want to highlight everything now and i want to control or command g just so that they are grouped together so now that they will all move together in one file control or command z to bring that back and now i'm going to unlock the print or this bottom layer and i'm going to highlight both of those and then i'm going to control or command g to make all this a group so this is all moving together so it just makes it a lot easier and i want you to see how you can um, see where we've cut out the background here so that's kind of what i was talking about except i didn't realize that i cut that right there so we're going to control or command z actually and go back and fix that you were probably watching going you cut over that piece all right, so let's get this back. All right, now we've got everything that's looking good. So controller command minus. Then we wanna lock the print and unlock the trace. Come back to our move tool. We're gonna click and drag over all the trace files. This time I'll right click and group just so you can see what the right click is like. Then I'm gonna unlock the uh, print background, do the same again, right click, 
group it together. So now they are all going to be grouped together and I'm going to be able to move them together. And again, you can see all my erase, you know, how it erased. All right, so now we want to make this a print file. So come up here to the top for the page setup. I've got it set for eight and a half by 11. And let's see, we want to come over here. I'm like, what am I doing? We want to come over here to the top and create the registration mark. So click on. I want to just make sure I've got this whole thing. I, you could actually do it this other way. So I'm going to click on this file, come up to the top where the green is, click on shift, and then I'm just going to uh, rotate. So move my mouse around. And I'm going to see, this is what I'm going to do here. Now, what this red line is showing you is that it's not going to cut or foil in our situation where the on the outside of the red line, but it will print. So because the top and the bottom doesn't have anything that's foiling or cutting, then I'm going to be fine because it's still going to print. So I'm just going to um, bring it up the closest that I can just kind of to maximize my paper, but it will still print outside of the red line. It just won't cut or foil outside of that red line. So just keep that in mind. All right, so now I'm going to send this to print. So I'm going to control or command P to bring up my print area and you can see that it's going to print just fine. But right here, I'm noticing that there is still some red that's going to print. So I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel and then I'm going to control or command plus and I'm going to come up here and because I am going to come over here to my layers panel. So in order to fix this and to delete this little red line at the top here, here we need to ungroup all these together. So I'm going to right click and click on ungroup. So now I've got, let me come out a little bit. So controller command minus. I've got the inside group that I'm highlighting here and then the outside group. But I can still see in my layers panel that they are on the same layer because here's my outer rectangle and then here is my group of um, the trace. Are they all still grouped together? So I'm gonna actually take this polygon and I'm going to drag it down into the print area where it was before. So now what I want to do is I'm actually just going to first I'm going to get my eraser tool and I'm just going to take this eyeball and I'm going to click on it and now it's going to get rid of all of my trace. So it's leaving this red line that's just going to allow me to erase it from the file so it won't print. And now I can come back and bring back my trace files and you can see that now it looks great. So I can go ahead and click on both of these again and group them if I wanted to, or I could just leave it like this. It's totally up to you. I'm going to do controller command minus to highlight everything and just group it together. Controller command G just because I want to keep everything together. So now that they are all grouped together, you can see in the layers panel that they are one group. All right. So now I'm going to controller command P and get my print file and everything looks really good. There's no, no more of those red lines. And now I'm just gonna send it to my printer to print. All right, you guys, so I'm hopping on here to let you know I didn't, I have not printed this file before and I don't know this file. So I didn't realize there is this faint uh, gray line. I'm gonna do Controller Command P to see if I can see that gray line and I just wasn't paying attention. Controller Command P. All right, it's so faint, it's super hard to see here. That That's why I didn't see it, but it actually did print. So what I'm gonna do, and you can actually see it right here, there's a hole where that gray line was. So I'm gonna grab my eraser tool and I'm gonna erase around that line because it did print and I do not want it on my final project because I'm not gonna be cutting it out right at a three by eight, I want it to be a little bit larger so I can put it, you know, so I can punch some holes into it. So it'll probably end up being more like a four by eight. So unfortunately I did not realize that that line was going to print. So I believe I got all that whole line and now actually 
I think I can move it a little bit closer to those registry. Why don't you know what? Whoops, controller command Z um, to get that back in the right spot. I thought those were grouped together. Controller command G to group them together. All right, so I'm going to leave it there. Actually, I'm gonna bring it out just a little bit now that I'm thinking about it because I need to put foil here and I don't want this, the foil to get in the way of uh, the registration marks. All right, so that looks good. I'm gonna print it one more time and go ahead and click on print. And the setting should be the same as the last time. All right, so here is my print ready to go. You can see I've got my registration mark. So I just need to load it onto my mat. And I'm just gonna be using a regular Silhouette mat. So you've seen me use in some of my other videos this metallic mat from We Are Memory Keepers. And I really like this for the foil quill. It's intended for the foil quill but I'm not using it this time because I'm doing a print and cut. And with a print and cut, I really just like to use a regular mat. So that is what I'm gonna do here. But you guys can choose to use the metallic one if you have. It's really great to save on um, your tape. All right, so I've got my foil, and the foil I'm using here is the Glimmer Hot Foil. I like, I like it for this project because it's a little bit smaller. Uh, because the only other foil I have is like a big 12 by 12 sheet and this is just a little bit easier to cut. So I want to keep in mind that I won't be foiling here and I won't be foiling here. So just kind of to save on my paper. That should be good. And I'm just going to leave it, obviously this is a lot bigger, I'm just going to leave it and afterwards I can go ahead and trim it off. So a couple things to keep in mind when you are putting the tape on, you don't want the tape to be anywhere where you're gonna be foiling underneath because the foil will not, or the heat won't transfer through the tape. So you just wanna make sure that you are good enough away. And I'm going to make it so it's not as sticky or neutralize that. And I just wanna see here. Um, I just want to be careful. So I'm kind of putting the tape right on the very edge. And I could have made that tape a little bit longer. Of course I didn't. So I'm just getting rid of some of the stick just so that I don't uh, rip the paper when I'm pulling it off. And I have definitely done that before. And make sure to leave the registration marks open. Also when you're doing the tape. So this bottom one, you don't need to worry about too much just because you know that there's nothing, you know, the print area or the foil area is up here at the top. And then let's be careful with this here. I should have pulled this over a little bit more. I don't want the black to rub off. In fact, let's see. I'm gonna see if I can move this without wrecking it. Ah. I move this up more. I just don't want to There you go. I did not want the black to rub off there. All right, so kind of pulling it taut. And same here. All right, so now it's ready to go into my machine. So now that it's printed and it's put onto the mat and ready to go, it's all loaded up, we're just going to send it to the silhouette. So click on send. 
and the you can see that it's going to foil all of my pieces so one thing i wanted to show you i'm going to come over here to the line panel here and what it's showing you is the red is obviously our trace where the silhouette is going to be working but this top one right here, if I click on it, you can see this is the outer edge here of this file. So if for whatever reason it ends up coming over as showing your print file, just go ahead and click off of it. And that way we're only going to be worrying about um, this trace file here. So if yours ends up not being red because your line color is a little bit different, that's totally fine. Just want you to keep in mind that you can turn off the background if it is for whatever reason showing. All right, so we're gonna go we're gonna go line by line here. And the first thing that I wanna do is to change this tool because I have got the Cameo 3, which has two tools. So I wanna make sure that it is on the blue tool because that is where my foil quill is gonna be. So if you only have one, I don't even, this won't even be an option for you. So just um, use the foil quill on the one that you have. And then we, you could probably leave this for now. I actually, let's change this to, Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm clicking on this and it's only giving me the option to, to cut. So if you're using this vinyl, the only thing that you can do is cut. So if you run into that where sketch is not available, just click on your material and come up to cardstock. You can just come up to cardstock plain and it's going to you know wanna cut that out, but we're gonna change the action to sketch. So you can see once we've changed our material, then sketch is available. So keep that in mind if you have your material set to something and the action sketch is not coming up, just go ahead and change your material. Now the default for this is a force of seven and a speed of five. I actually think I'm gonna bring the speed down just a little bit and um, I believe the force of seven is totally fine. I've done this several times and it works out. So it is actually taking a little bit time to work on this. It's transferring everything over to sketch instead of cut. And because there are tons of little lines in here, it's just taking my computer a little bit of time to compute it. So just be patient if this happens to you. So now it's all ready to go. The settings look great. My foil quill is in the second tool. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and hit send. All right, so here is my file straight out of my silhouette. And let's do the big reveal before we take it off the mat. So I'm just gonna carefully take off some of this tape just because I do not want to rip my paper. And keep in mind, you can reuse this tape for other projects. Um, is definitely reusable. And that looks so, so good, you guys. Wow. Super happy with that. There is a little bit of, of um, gold there, but it just wiped right off. Now I'm gonna stick this, um, this part, the, the protector, the matte protector on top, and then turn it around, and I'm gonna pull the paper off by by bending the mat, and I do this so that my paper underneath does not uh, curl, and then I'm adding the blue so that my mat doesn't stick to my table, which has happened before. So let me just move this out of the way so you guys can see what it looks like. All right, you guys, so this is the final result. You can see how great it did transferring that gold. And one thing that I don't know if you can kind of catch on camera is because the foil quill is pushing into the paper, it's kind of gives a deboss look. Like when you put your hand over it, you can definitely feel the edges of um, that tree. And if you can kind of see, it looks debossed there a little bit. And I think that's really, really cool. I bet this would be really great for uh, let's say the um, like a thicker paper. I'm going to try this with maybe some letterpress paper to see how that would look. So I think this looks super great. And look at those baubles. Don't they look so fun just in the gold? So super excited about how this turned out. Um, 
lots of ways you can play with this. I was just thinking that it would have been really cool to print out the black in red instead of black and then do the gold. That might be something that I try next just to play with it a little bit, but I think this looks really, really great. So I hope that you guys will have a lot of fun with it. So there you go. All right, you guys, are you still with me? I know this is a longer video, but I wanted to give you several ideas so that it can get your mind going of how you can use the foil coal. Cause I'm telling you, this is a tool that you're gonna wanna have in your craft room. So the next project that we are gonna be working on is taking a pre-printed page, playing with the digital file and adding some foil details to it. All right, so we're back in the silhouette and for this last project, I wanna show you how you can use the foil quill to add detail to your physical paper. So what you're seeing in front of me is a digital paper from the Paisley Press December Daily 2019 kit. And I actually have the physical paper for this kit as well. So I have both. If you don't have this kit, but you want to get the digital files, I believe those digital files are still available. And I'm such a huge fan of digital files because there's so many things you can do with it. So if you don't have the digital file, you can go ahead and use this as a print and cut like I did for the last file. But if you have the physical paper as well, I'm gonna show you how to do that also. So as we get started, the first thing that we need to do, like always, is to trace. So because this is a darker gray and a white, I'm able to trace it as is. So I'm gonna go over here and click on the trace panel and then click on select trace area. And then I'm just gonna click and drag over the whole thing. And what you're gonna see is it's highlighting the black because it always highlights the darker part. So it's highlighting the black as if that's what we wanna cut, cut out. But really what we wanna cut out is around here. So I'm gonna come over to the threshold because this is obviously not doing a very good job. And I'm gonna bring the threshold down so that we are able to isolate more of the white. If these were reversed, like in the other projects, then I would be moving my threshold up. So that actually, th I think that actually looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and click trace. And now I'm gonna move this file out of the way and you can see that we've got a really great trace here. There are a couple pieces we'll need to get rid of and then we need to get rid of the outer rectangle. So I'm just gonna right click and come down to release compound path and now again, it's gonna make everything into its own little uh, file or trace. So I'm gonna click off of that and then click on the background here and then just go ahead and hit delete. And I'm gonna command plus to get a little bit closer so we can see what's going on. So for this file, I actually don't wanna do anything with this December. So I'm gonna click over that word and then click on all these pieces here and just delete them. Then the next thing that I wanna do, because I feel like this looks a little jaggedy and we could do a better job with this trace. I'm gonna click on, actually I'm gonna come over here to the, I'm gonna edit the point. So whatever this is called, we're gonna edit the point. So we're gonna click on that and then we're gonna click on the trace. And you can see now it's showing us all these points. And then I'm just gonna come over here to the S and this is actually gonna smooth out all these points. So you can see how smooth it is now and it will just be so much better for if you were gonna cut this out, It'd be a very good cut. And also it's gonna be a very good trace. So I'm gonna control or command plus a little bit just because I wanna show you uh, this spot right here. I don't really love how this is looking. I kinda of wanna smooth it out a little bit more. So I think I'm gonna click on um, that point and I'm just gonna hit delete. And if I wanted to make that a little bit smoother, I could bring down that handle. And I think I wanna do the same for this one right here. And I think that that looks really nice. I could go in and do the same thing here also and click on there. And I think that that looks pretty good as well. If I wanted to get really picky, I could fix this. Uh, I'm not gonna worry about it. All right, so I'm gonna come up and I'm holding down the space bar to get that hand so I can move around. I'm gonna click on all these pieces here and just delete them. And then this spot here, I think I actually, I haven't smoothed any of them out. So I'm gonna come back here to get 
um, this tool to edit my points, click on it, click on the S, and now you can see it's a lot smoother. You can see how much smoother it is there. And that actually looks really good. I don't mind that. And so we are just going to leave it. So we're gonna control or command minus. All right, so I'm actually going to um, highlight both of those in controller command G just to group them together. And I am going to leave these as an outline because I want the foil quill to uh, just do the outline here. So when I bring it over, my idea then is to, let me click on one of these, one of these files. Actually, I shouldn't have grouped it together. I'm going to um, ungroup ungroup it because I want them to move separately. What I want to do, um, I'm going to click on this image here. I want to offset it a little bit. I want it to have that offset look. I kind of like how that looks. And then I'm going to do this one also, but I, I want them both coming in to the circle. So I think that that actually looks really good there. So now I'm just going to group it all together so that the paper stays with um, the lines here. So I'm going to do control or command G so it's all grouped together. So ultimately what I want to have in the middle. So if you just wanted to do this and send it off and just foil this, you could. You could put like a picture or something in the middle here or you could like... Uh, actually cut out a word and you could stick it in there if you wanted. What I want to do is I've got this, um, I want to say it's a hymn. I think it's a carol. I don't know. It's a way in a manger. So you guys tell me, is it a hymn or is it a carol? Because I sing it at church. So I always think it's a hymn, but it's also a Christmas carol, right? Because carolers sing it. Anyway, I'm digressing. But I created this in Illustrator and then I brought it in. This is an SVG file and you can see I'm trying to get it on the paper, but it's going behind it. So I'm just going to click on it. I'm going to send forward or send to the front or bring to front actually. And now you can see it's on top of the paper and I'm just going to do the best I can to try and center it to the paper. Um, I'm not going to use the align panel just because this is coming out too far, so it's not going to center it. But if I wanted to, whoops, I could click on both of those, get the align panel, and I could center it vertically here like this, not vertically, horizontally, so that I know that it is centered in between these properly. So then I can just click on it. It's already already well I'm clicked on both click on this file again and then I can move it just so I feel like it's in the right place here all right so I really like the way that looks and I just want you to um, understand that this file is does not have an outline the outline is actually black just FYI so if I click on it and come over here to my color and go to, or excuse me, the line style, and then come over here to the color and click on red, you can see now that I'm, I'm showing the outline. I just wanted you to realize that this was actually a cut file and that this would cut because it is an SVG file. So I wanted to show you that just because it wasn't red. So um, you can always change the color of your cut lines. So, okay, now that we have that completed, the next thing that we need to do is fill it in. So these are gonna be an outline and these are gonna be filled in like we've been doing this whole time. So come back to the panel and we're gonna get the line effects and then we're gonna click on the spiral like we've been using this whole time and then I'm gonna bring it so it's all the way to the left. All right, so you can see that it does a really good job filling in. Now, one thing I want to show you, and this may not make a big difference using the foil quill, but because this is cursive, you can see that I'm getting all these outlines of the letters, and I didn't do a very good job with this file in Illustrator. I should have used the Pathfinder tool to make this all one word, but I didn't, and never fear, we can do it in here. So with it selected, we're gonna come over here to the Modify panel, and I'm gonna click on weld and you can see that these words are going to all become one. So it's gonna take just a minute, but as I control or command plus and get closer, 
you can see that now the words are one. Now, like I said, I don't know if this would have made a big difference using the foil quill because it's just going to fill in that space, but it definitely would make a difference if you were going to cut this out with vinyl, let's say. You would, you would be cutting out all those little pieces and you definitely don't want to do that. Okay, so I can see now that these are all their own individual words again. So I'm going to right click and come down to group because I want to make these into a group again. And that is just gonna take a minute. Like I've said, creating all these little lines takes your computer time to think. So if you're having that issue, that is why. All right, so now I've got my file ready to go. The last thing I wanna do is group it all together so that I can move it around. I'm gonna Control or Command G to just group everything together so I don't have to worry about messing up any of my placements. So now you can see it's all together. So the next thing I need to do is get this file ready to put onto my mat. So I'm gonna decide where I want it to go and I Control or Command minus just so I can see this whole mat here and what I want to do is I want to come three inches over and three inches down and I want to be in this square right here and I'm going to get up a little bit closer just so I can get it in the exact right place so by doing this if I put my uh, piece of paper in this quadrant right here, then my when I send it to the silhouette, it knows that it's going to foil here, so it will be in the exact right place. So it's not as accurate, I will say, it is not as accurate as using the print and cut or the print and foil, but it is pretty accurate, and you'll see that I, I got it pretty much dead on. So I know it can fluctuate just a tiny bit based on how you insert the mat, but I think it does a really good job. So now we are actually ready to get our mat ready and then send this to the silhouette. And I'm not going to go ahead and go through the whole sending this to the silhouette because you saw me do that in length in the second project. So um, it is basically the exact same steps and the exact same settings, but I will hop onto my desk and show you how I get my mat ready to go. All right, you guys, so here is the six by eight paper that came in the kit last year that I'm gonna add the foil to. And as per my silhouette, I'm gonna stick it three inches over and three inches down, so in this square here, and I'm gonna do my best to get it in the exact right place. Now, I like to use this magnetic mat just because I feel like it's easy to use and I don't wanna, I hate taping things down just cause I feel like I'm always messing with things. So I'm just gonna add that, those um, magnets there to help me out. And I'm using the Glimmer Hot Foil Gold and it, this is in four inches I believe and it definitely covers everything. So it is a good size. And I am just gonna cut, let me turn this a little bit so I can see it better. I'm gonna cut it so it goes over. Let me see. And that looks about right there. And then I'm gonna lay down my magnets. Keeping in mind, we don't want the magnets to be anywhere near where we're gonna be foiling, because you definitely can't foil over. And if this moved a little bit, which I feel like I wanna move it over actually a little bit here and move it up. It's really essential that you get this in the right place if you're going to be foiling on top of a file like this. And I wanna just double check how close this is. So it's a little close, I wanna make sure not to get enough of the foil, but not too much. And then we'll take it onto the bottom right there. And make sure your magnets, let's turn this back around, make sure your magnets don't go here where the rollers are gonna be or it will all shift and it will all move around. Trust me, I have done that before and it is not a good idea. All right, so now I'm gonna load this into my silhouette and start foiling.
All right, you guys, so here is the big reveal. Let me see if I can get it upright. I just think this is so much easier to use than that tape. And this is my favorite part. I even think that looks super cool like that. Oh, wow. I love how that turned out. I love the detail here and that it's offset. Oh, I think that looks so good. All right, you guys, so just one last look at all of our projects. So we have this one where we've used a pre-printed card and used some of the design to add some details uh, to the paper and then also just doing a quote there in the middle. So think about ways that you can foil onto pre-printed cards. Like I just really love this idea. You could use any of the three by four cards as well in the kit. I was thinking how fun this one would be to maybe put some baubles on or some like strings of lights or um, the other one I was kind of looking at this one, one of the stripes where you could maybe put like gold, like a single gold stripe in the white or in the um, in the green, just adding a little something to, to make it pop with some gold. So I love the idea. Oh, and the other thing I was thinking of is circle transparency. So any of the transparencies from the kit you could definitely use. You just need to make sure you get it in the right place. So think of, you know, you could take this and just add like a circle around the edge and that way it just adds a little something special to that uh, transparency. So think about all the stuff that's included in the kit that you could add foil to. So it's a lot of fun. The next one that we did, and I'll just lift them both up. The next one that we did, we are using a digital file and then we're changing some of the elements to foil love how this one turned out as well. I think, like I mentioned before, I, I would love to print this red to see how it looks with the gold. But like I said, I really love the idea of this and just think of how many digital files you could use that you could switch up to add a little bit of foil. And keep in mind, you guys, I've used gold for all of these projects, but there is a variety of colors. There's copper that would go with the copper from the kit this year. There's red, there's greens, there's blues, there's a ton of different foil quill colors. So you're not just limited to the gold. It's just that that is what I have on hand. And then the last one here, which is actually the first one that I showed you, this was actually the pattern paper that I played with to get the stars to be foiled. So love how this one turned out as well and just how it changed the file. I just think there's so many uses for our digital files. You really do get your money's worth. All right, you guys, so that is gonna be it for this video. Thank you so much for being here. I know this was a long video, but I just wanted to give you guys a number of uh, ways that you could use the foil quill, especially for those of you that are wanting to go out and buy it. I just wanted you to see how versatile this tool really is. So thank you again for joining me. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below and I will be happy to answer them. And if you like what you saw, please give this video a thumbs up. It really does help me. All right, you guys, we will see you in the next video. Bye.